Hey everyone, this is Stren from ExtremeRigs.net and today we're going to talk about the Apogee XL which is the new CPU block from SwiftTech and it was kind of released at the same time as the H220X which is SwiftTech's response to the all-in-one coolers and it's basically a uh, a small compact integrated kit almost but that is still very expandable so you can grow that kit into a kind of normal water cooling loop uh, it's a great idea it's a great product from everything we've seen and today we're just going to be looking at the CPU block itself now if you haven't realized yet um, we are looking at a slightly different version of it on the left here we have the Apogee HD this is SwiftTech's old CPU block. Not the oldest, of course, but uh, this is what we reviewed in the 2012 CPU roundup. On the right here is the SwiftTech Apogee XL. So we've gone from HD to XL. Now you'll see that there isn't a SwiftTech logo on here, but instead the ASUS Republic of Gamers logo. And that's because this particular block has been modified by Performance PCs. Performance PCs is, for those of you who don't know, a store in the US um, who sells not only water cooling parts but a bunch of other stuff. And they have a laser cutter and one of the services they offer is the ability to fully customize this block with you know, any design you choose. So the standard Apogee XL includes an LED. So behind this panel there is an LED. And so when you plug in this little three pin fan header here, that actually powers the LED. And so this ROG logo will glow red. <clears throat> so there's a lot of possibilities for modders to kind of create their own custom look for their CPU block with this. Um, and there's also a bunch of, you know, preset versions you can buy. You, you know, obviously this is the ROG theme, but there's also an MSI themed one and a couple of others, uh, AMD, Intel, um, NVIDIA, all that kind of stuff. So, um, we really like this idea. Uh, no one else has done this yet that we're aware of, and um, it looks great. It looks very high quality and it performs well when you know when you plug it in and it lights up it looks great so we love that performance pcs is offering this and we hope that they will continue this onto other products um so that's kind of the performance pcs modding service on this guy um in terms of the actual block performance and how things have changed uh there are elements of the design that have been carried over for example, these thumb screws, they look a little different, but the same design elements are there. On the Apogee HD, these could not be removed um, easily. They have circlips that hold the thumb screws in place. And so that means when you're picking up the block, you know, the thumb screws don't fall out. That's generally a good thing. Um, now for you know, changing sockets, this one is set up for one particular socket, 1150. If you were to change to socket 2011, which has a built-in back plate, you would need different screws. And that means removing the circlip, and for some people that's going to be a bit of an annoyance. The same thing is true on the XL. The difference is, again, they don't fall out, but they're a little smaller. Here we have thumb screws that you can also use a Phillips head screwdriver on. However, they look like they're designed primarily to be thumb screws. On the XL, they're now smaller, and although you can use them as thumb screws, because they're so close to the block, really you want to be using a Phillips head screwdriver. And that's okay. Most people have one of those. It's not hard. The other thing that is carried over on the screws, you'll see that the screws have little shoulder stops here and that stops the block from being screwed in too far. Essentially when you run out of um, room and that shoulder hits the circuit board, 
that means the block is you know perfectly screwed down and that's kind of nice to know. The other big change is that these ports are now much more widely spaced than before. Here you can see there are two ports and they're a little bit closer together. They're close enough whereby you won't have problems with standard fittings. If you're using Swiftex quick disconnects, you may have some issues trying to fit them in there. So this block definitely won't have that issue and that's a nice thing. Um, the other thing that's changed on the old block you had two extra ports. I never saw anyone really using those and it kind of complicated the block performance, you know. Um, when we test it, I only ever use these two ports, but if you use these then the flow patterns within the block are a little different and flow rates will be different and so um, you know performance changes. Um, this one there's none of those options and I'm okay with that. I don't think those were necessary um, and if anything were confusing to a new user. Uh, speaking of flow, the old HD was a very restrictive block. It was one of the most restrictive blocks we tested. Things have improved slightly with the new XL. It is a little bit higher flow. However, it is nowhere close to the middle of the pack. It still would be labeled as a very restrictive block. And this is surprising if you've watched any of our recent coverage on GPU blocks. For GPU blocks, SwiftTech have a mentality of uh, the block having to be very low restriction and having very good core cooling. Um, and that those two things should occur and you know the price can be whatever it has to be. This is designed you know, with the H220X in mind, so budget is a concern. And so this isn't a high flow block and it isn't the best thermally. If we take a look at the thermal results, you'll see that compared to the top two performing blocks by EK and coolants, the Apogee is a little behind. And that's true whether you look at the Apogee HD or the XL. Indeed, even though the internals of the block have changed, the performance on our 4770K, we couldn't even notice a difference. And that's very surprising. We did expect performance to increase. So speaking of the internals, uh, we've already disassembled this block. So here you should now be able to see the copper base here and there are channels machined in both X and Y directions. The idea is that water flows into one side of the channel and out the other side. As you can see this is a symmetrical block so it doesn't matter which port you use for input and which port you use for output. That's a good thing for the H220X where it's designed for newbie water coolers who may not know that for some blocks directionality matters. The other thing that confuses me a little is this O-ring. Um, traditionally O-rings are used to seal a section of a block so that water can't go through it. Um, you'll see here that there's a, a channel machine for the O-ring to keep it in place. However, um, you know, that's not really doing anything there. I have some theories it could be to help with bow. However, it's very unusual to use an O-ring to create bow because for start, O-rings are squishy. Um, and therefore, you know, the amount of bow you're going to get is not going to be as tightly controlled process-wise. Um, traditionally, you know, bow might be, you know, fine-tuned by, you know, machining the center of the block a little differently. It's kind of su surprising to see an O-ring. We saw the same thing on the old Apogee HD. Still not quite sure why SwiftTech do it like that. So that's the internals of the block. We've covered the externals of the block, the thermal performance. 
The last thing to take note on is the back plate. If you're using 2011, uh, socket 2011 in either X79 or X99 form, you won't be using a back plate. Um, this is, according to Swift Tech, the same back plate as they used previously. So if you haven't had compatibility issues and you're upgrading, you're not going to have them now. Um, however, it is worth mentioning that on my ASUS Maximus 6 impact board, uh, the circuit board holes were small enough that these little metal, um, I guess, thread pieces, it's completely the wrong word, but essentially this little metal piece is supposed to slip inside the hole. So if you have the circuit board like this, it's going to push through and uh, it'll be flush with the top surface of the circuit board. Now after installation it was flush, but the um, grip on of the circuit board was so tight on this that I couldn't get the, the back plate to go through. What I had to do was position it in the right place and then put the thumb screw through the top, screw the thumb screw in and it would gradually pull it through. Now once I removed the block and tried to remove the back plate, um, of course, the back plate was then hard to remove. And you'll be able to see, if I line this up correctly, that this corner is pretty bent out of shape. Um, and that's because I had to use a flathead screwdriver to lever it out off of the board. These were so tight with the circuit board uh, that I couldn't physically pull it off. I had to lever it with a screwdriver and it bent the bracket. Now SwiftTech have assured me they meet spec on this and so the fault lies with ASUS. Uh, I don't have calipers of sufficient accu accuracy to make sure, um, but it's something worth bearing in mind and something worth thinking about. Um, for most people it isn't going to be a problem because they don't install blocks hundreds of times like I do. Um, but seeing as we found a little problem, it's best to, best to talk about it. So overall, uh, you know, just looping back and, and covering again what we've covered to give you a quick summary. Uh, overall we like the block. We love the fact that performance PCs have come out and said we are going to offer customizable uh, top plates for this so that you can have any backlit um, logo that you want. The block itself in terms of thermal performance, it's not the best thermally performing block you can get. However, it's not bad. Um, you know, it's only a degree or two behind the better blocks and that's perfectly ac acceptable. In terms of flow, it's disappointing. We would prefer a much higher flow block and we hope that Swift Tech will change things in future. Um, and in terms of the mount, we still like the Swift Tech mount. We like that the screws don't fall over and you don't have springs flying everywhere when you undo things. Um, we like that. Um, we did have some issues with, with the back plate. Uh, but in general, as a whole, it's a well-rounded block, um, and there's nothing bad per se about it. So, the modified version, great for modders, um, and the customization is, is really the selling point for me on this block. Like I said, if you're all about performance, this isn't the one you're going to get, but if you're a modder, this has a lot of opportunities for you to kind of create something different and new and uh, we think a lot of you guys are going to like it because of that. So that's it from us. Uh, if you like the video, then like the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to see more from us, subscribe to the channel, tell us what you want to see.